Hi everybody, Jacob Breed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're talking about the macroeconomics exam from 2024. This is set two, question number two. In order to do well on this question, you should be through unit two. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into it. Now this question is all about the country of malt rose and we have some data for them showing the quantity of food and clothing that are produced within this country. Those are the only two goods they produce so that's what their gross domestic product will be based on. For part A we have to calculate the nominal GDP and we have to show our work. When it comes to calculating nominal GDP we're going to use the current year quantities and we're going to multiply those by the current year prices then sum the results. For year two, we have 10 units of food and the price of food is $13. That's $130 worth of food. When it comes to clothing, we have 20 units at $4 each. That's $80 worth of clothing. Add those together and we have $210 worth of nominal GDP for year two. And if you show all that math, you get your first point. For part B, we have to calculate the GDP deflator for year two and show our work. Remember the formula for the GDP deflator is nominal divided by real times 100. We just calculated the nominal GDP for year two. Now it's time to calculate the real GDP for year two. The formula for real GDP is the current year quantities times the base year prices. And then you once again sum the results. There's 10 units of food times $10. That's $100 worth of food. And 20 units of clothing times $5 is $100 worth of clothing. Add those together and it's $200 worth of real GDP. Now we're going to plug in the numbers to find our GDP deflator. It's $210 of nominal GDP divided by $200 of real GDP times 100 equals 105 for our GDP deflator. And if you have all that math, you get your next point. For part C, we are asked what the inflation rate is between year one and year two. In order to calculate the inflation rate, we first have to remember that the deflator for the base year is always 100. And then the formula for the inflation rate is new minus old divided by old times 100. Plug in those numbers and do the math, 105 minus 100 divided by 100, then times 100, and that gives us a 5% inflation rate between the two years. And if you have that, you get your next point. For part D, we are told the expected inflation rate between year one and year two was 3%. And we have to say if people living on fixed incomes are better off, worse off, or unaffected as a result of the actual inflation rate we just calculated. Now remember, when inflation is higher than expected, that means lenders, savers, and people living on fixed incomes will be worse off. And since the actual inflation rate was 5%, while the expected one was 3%, that means they are worse off. Identify that and you get your next point. For part D, double I, we have to say if borrowers are going to be worse off, better off, or unaffected. And this time we have to explain. Higher than expected inflation means that dollars are going to be less valuable than expected and that makes it easier to pay off loans. So that leads us to our answer here, better off because the higher than expected inflation means that borrowers pay back fewer real dollars than expected and they pay a lower real interest rate as a result. And if you have an answer something like that, you get your next point. And there you have it. Those are the answers to the 2024 macroeconomics exam, question number two, set two. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up that total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.